What's up team? We are back in the Nicopedia lab. lab. Kitchen. Lab. Kitchen. It's This is my kitchen. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you some life secrets. Some really useful information, stuff that I've picked up along the way. It wasn't enough information to make a video about it, so I'm kind of putting them all like in one video right here. Like 10 super interesting, awesome life secrets that you guys need to know like today. So let's dive right on in there and I'm gonna start sharing. <laughs> This one was really interesting. My editor actually showed me this one. So let's say you're tooling around on your computer, things are going great. You're like, wow, I'm watching so many Nicopedias. I'm so good. Woo, Nicopedias, wow, new video, great. Comment, like, subscribe. <laughs> and then you're like, oh no, the internet's out. And so you're like, oh, I'm gonna go back into YouTube to see if I, oh no, it says there's no internet connection. Oh no. Well, I used to think like, Oh wow, man, like somebody in the coding department like really got it wrong here and they're just like, they just put this like really crappy, you know, that, what is this? Is this a raptor? It, it appears to be like Barney perhaps? I don't know what that is. So my editor way back when was like, hey, did you know that it's actually a game? And I was like, no, dude, what are you talking about? And he's like, yeah, go ahead, hit the space bar and it's a video game. And you hit the space bar to jump over the cactuses. Woo, woo, woo. And you get points. And so I'm definitely entertained by this, by the way. And if you hit one of the cactuses, that's what happens, game over. Whoever the coder was that decided to put this game inside of Google Chrome when your internet goes out, kudos to you. All right, this one's really interesting. So this is aluminum foil, right? And I would say almost every home has aluminum foil. Now, if you're just like a normal regular person, you buy the stuff and then you pull it out and then you're like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some baking, I'm gonna put it on one of my sheets, like, all right, time to, I'm gonna roll it out, right? I'm gonna do this. But if you do it too quickly, oh, I'm really hungry, I really need this, and I go. The people who designed this thought about this a long time ago and they actually developed this really cool mechanism in the box. And now forgive me all the people who are like cookers out there and are like, duh bro. On the side of the box, you can barely see it. There's these little tabs. You push the tab in. Boom. On the other side. There's another tab. You push it in. Ow, oh, that hurt my finger. Okay, now what we've done is we've kept it, it's now gonna stay in there as a roll. Now maybe because I'm a millennial and I just never like, I didn't learn this in school or I just wasn't taught this at home, but yeah, who knew? Who knew that there were little tabs on the side right there? This next one typically doesn't happen in your own kitchen. If you're at home, you probably have access to coffee filters or you can go to the store. This is really if you're traveling. For the moment, let's just say we don't have any coffee filters, right? So, okay, didn't pack the coffee filters, forgot about that. Or maybe you are at home, and you got some company over and you're like, man, I really, I've gotta make some coffee, but I'm out of filters. No sweat. You should be able to find a paper towel almost anywhere. Either in a hotel room or at your house. Somewhere, there's usually paper towels. This is gonna become your new filter. What I'll do is I will fold it as if it is one of these type two filters, which are like kind of conical, like yay. Now we have a cone. It's a little bigger on one side than it is the other, but that'll fit in there. And really you just wanna make sure that it kind of just gets in there. All right, there we go. And let's say I'm gonna give it to three people. So one, two, three, okay. Bruno. So we've now brewed our coffee. You guys want to take a look at the top there? <coughs> Just like a normal coffee filter. That's paper towel. Still percolating a little bit. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, give ourselves a little taste test here. Looks like coffee smells like coffee. Moment of truth here, people. Ah, 
Tastes like a good cup of coffee. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It does, it really tastes good. It tastes just like a normal cup of coffee. The best part of Nickopedia videos is learning so much useful information. <sighs> okay, so I just made my delicious cup of coffee here with my paper towels. And I realized, up, oh, I need a little more milk. So I'm gonna go into my, my fridge here and grab this milk. I come down here, I pick it up, and I'm like, oh! Oh, is it good? Is it bad? I don't, I don't know. Here, let me check the date. It says May 13th. The date is actually the sell-by date. So this is the date of which the milk should be sold by. It is still good for another seven days after this day. So milk's probably gonna last a lot longer than you think, um, based on that date. If you're like me, you love cooking with garlic, both fresh and powdered. And so the problem is though, is that after you're done eating the things that are delicious and garlicky, then you got garlic breath. So I'm gonna tell you the three best remedies for garlic breath. The first one, just eat an apple. So an apple has an enzyme in it that neutralizes the sulfide component of garlic. Um, almost any fruit that actually turns brown has that same enzyme in it. So like a banana does that, that turns brown. Um, this, this, this other apples in here turn brown. Any fruit that turns brown has that enzyme in it. Remedy number two, green tea, yeah baby. Uh, I got polyphenols, oh yeah. <laughs> so polyphenols, um, which is what is inside of green tea, um, does this very similar, th same thing, a very similar reaction uh, that the uh, enzyme in the apple does. It reduces some of those sulfide components. And so green tea is another great remedy for garlic breath. Boil some water, put one of those in there, boom, boom, bam, and yeah, baby, I'm here to save the day. Number three, uh, you want to eat something that is acidic. Uh, anything that is less than 3.6 on the pH scale is very acidic, and what that does is the acidity reduces uh, an enzyme called alanase, and alanase sort of enhances the garlic odor, so the acidic attacks the alanase, which then reduces the overall garlic stench. So, thank you, Mr. Lemon. You're very welcome, Nick. If you like spicy food, like myself, the chemical that is in all the hot foods is capsaicin. So here's uh, five remedies for spicy food that I learned uh, through making Nicopedia. So I'm just gonna, over here real quick, here we go, boom. Milk. Milk has casein in it, uh, it's protein, and what it does is actually breaks the bond between the capsaicin and the VR1 receptor inside of your mouth. And so milk basically comes in and is like, ain't nobody got time for spicy, get out of here, capsaicin, kapow, peace. And then it's just like, yo, I'm just chilling. It also has milk fat in it, and so that does uh, something very similar. Like dissolves like, that milk fat uh, will absorb some of the capsaicin molecules, and then they will wash down when you're sort of swirling the milk around. That is actually the best one. Milk, I tried it, milk is the best one. Uh, chocolate, got a lot of chocolate here. Got a ch pound of chocolate. Um, chocolate for the same reason, like dissolves like. Uh, capsaicin is uh, sort of, in, it's in an oil, and so the fat and the oil, the fat actually absorbs some of the, um, uh, the capsaicin out of that oil, and then the fat molecules and little globules go straight down, down your throat. Um, sugar. Sugar is kind of a weird one, but essentially what happens is the sugar granules end up absorbing some of that uh, capsaicin oil. And so you gotta do like a mouthful of sugar or like a mouthful of honey. Um, that one works okay, but it's kind of just more of like a cool sensation. Not cool, it's actually really hot, but it's like, it's a really weird sensation because it's really sweet, but then really spicy at the same time. And for the same reason, anything that's really high in sugar, a banana also works. And it kind of works for the same reason as sugar. Bread will absorb some of the oil that the capsaicin is in, and you'll swallow it and it will get out of your mouth and down into your esophagus. Hopefully, uh, it's not like a ghost pepper and it's not too hot and it's not gonna like just destroy your esophagus. So boom, there's five things really quick to get rid of all the spicy up in your mouth. What? All right, if you've ever been in an elevator and someone presses all the buttons, right? Like, I'm like, ah, shoot, no, I didn't want, I don't, I don't wanna to go to this floor. I, want to, I just wanna to go to this one. You press it three times. One, two, three. Boom, undoes it. 
You press three times, it undoes four. You don't gotta go. Okay, you need some gas, and you're pulling up to the gas station, and then you realize, wait a minute, whose car is this? Where am I driving? Where am I? If, well, if you have those questions, you probably shouldn't be driving, but you're probably wondering yourself, what side is the gas cap on? Well, good thing that almost all automotive manufacturers have actually thought about that a little ahead of time. And if you look down here on the actual dash, it tells you right here, there's a little arrow and it tells you and it either points to the right or it points to the left. So this is pointing and telling me that my gas cap is on the right hand side. So I need to turn my car around and get some gas on the right hand side. Arrow points right, it's on the right hand side. Okay, um, if you're like me, you always want the best deal at the grocery store. And sometimes it's hard to find the best deal at the grocery store because there's all these like, you know, it's like sale price and then this price, low price, and then maybe this is it. But typically speaking, like, you know, you always want to look at the bottom shelves first, that's where the best deals are. But there's actually a little secret in the grocery store that I learned in college. Within the price, it tells you either per fluid ounce or per pound what it is. So that as long as this is the smallest number, that's the best deal. So for example, this olive oil, whatever this is, 58.8 per fluid ounce, okay? Um, so I'm not, that, okay, well here's 39. That's looking pretty good. All right, uh, 43, eh, that's decent. This also kind of does the, it does the work for you when it's like, here's the price, here's the volume. And you're like, uh, I don't wanna do math at the grocery store. This does that math for you because it always does it in the same metric. So it always does it in per fluid ounce. So here's a 35, that's pretty good. Um, what's the cheapest? Oh, here we go, look at this, wow. 24 cents per fluid ounce. You can see it's not in the biggest container. So I wouldn't have known that. I would have, I would have thought maybe, oh, like you saved the most with this one. But that one's only 30.9 cents. So really, it'd be better if I got a bunch of these, like a ton of these. And that's how I save a ton of money at the grocery store. This same logic still applies to things that aren't edible too. So uh, toilet paper is a good one. So we'll look right here. 5.31 cents per square feet. Over here we have 5.22. So like you can see right there, like good example. Not much difference between this guy and this guy. Like you think you're gonna get like ultra savings here, but really like, you don't save that much, you could probably just get the little guy. I mean, think about what you're doing with the toilet paper, right? <laughs> what are you doing with the toilet paper? Doesn't have to be that expensive. <laughs> this next one has came in handy a ton after I graduated college. If you're a dude, maybe even a girl, I don't know, you know, I know girls' closets are very different than guys' closets. Girls' closets are like, there's like a gajillion shirts and like they're like color coded. Dudes, let me tell you how they organize their clothes. They just throw it on the floor. And so typically you'll find a shirt like this uh, on the floor. That's how you would find a shirt in my room, uh, wadded up in a ball and just on the floor, right? If you look at it and you pull it all out like this and you're like, oh, I'm gonna be on camera or like going on a date. I wanna make sure that I don't look terrible. Look how wrinkled that is. This shirt is like horrendously wrinkled every which way possible. You don't need an iron or a steamer. You don't. All you need is a spray bottle. You ready? You can actually already see the wrinkles leaving the shirt. Now, here's the reason this works. It's the same reason that it works for the iron. So, cotton is made of cellulose fibers that are like it's essentially cellulose polymers, right? And in between each of those polymer strands are hydrogen bonds. Water breaks those hydrogen bonds and temporarily allows it to take a new form, a new like structure, like a new like uh, shape, right? And just by gravity alone, it can go flat again because of the, the shirt kind of weighs a little bit more. And so you're left with a flat shirt and all you did was spray it with water. Now, because your body is 98.6 degrees, you put this shirt on and the little bit of water that you sprayed on there evaporates. So like, you only have to use the iron if you wanna press something, but you can de-wrinkle something just by spraying it with water. That's it. No more wrinkles. Bonus round! All right, so I am a avid recycler. I always recycle my bottles and I used to do this. I used to go, oh, there's a little bit of water left in it. 
Mmm. And then we take this and then bottle and I would put it like in the recycling container. This is like what I would do. Just boom. Okay. No. No, 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 no. That's not how that's done. Because the volume, you can only probably get like 24 of those things in there. You take the bottle, you take the top off, all right? See, it's already kind of in this like configuration where it looks like a spring, right? It's like already ribbed on the side. Take said bottle, put it in hand, pull down, and then you put the cap back on, creates a little vacuum, right? Does not come undone, stays like that, stays crushed, and then in it goes. So there we go! There are uh, some secrets that I hope will make your life a lot better. Maybe you guys can use some of these. And please let me know in the comment section down below um, where some of them you were like, what? Like, I never knew that existed. Or you're like, I knew that one, but that's so pretty good that you reminded me. So let me know in the comment section below which one like blew your mind the most and you're like, wow, didn't know that existed. Definitely gonna use that information now. Um, and if you haven't yet, Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, at Nick Uhas on Twitter, at Nick Uhas on Instagram, and Nick Uhas on Facebook. Uh, it's a lot easier, it's a lot quicker way to get in touch with me. And if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button because we have new videos every week, and I'll see you really soon.